Welcome to this driving review of the all-new Mercedes S-Class. This new generation here on our channel in exterior, interior and the driving experience. We're going to talk about the changes. If you look at the predecessor, we're going to tell, tell you everything you need to know what it sets apart from the competition. Also, some talk about S-Class versus GLS. So all you need to know about the new S-Class, the big star. <laughs> so. Please join us here. Thomas in front of the camera, John is behind in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. So in the front you have a typical S-Class grille, hasn't changed too much in the design actually, but it is actually a little bit wider than before. Typical Mercedes star on the top and even though this is the AMG line, this will always remain like this. And this makes also the S-Class the vehicle which has the least difference from the normal version to the AMG line. The only difference is here a little stronger bumper and the air intakes are a little bit more prominent here in this AMG line. So the color is called High Tech Silver and indeed the AMG line here for the S-Class. Then multi-beam LED lamps are standard. This option equipped with the so-called digital light that can actually project something on the road like lines where your lane is when you don't see it that much at night, for example. Um, so people from the outside will see that there's something, you know, lighter, you know, in, in, in that spot. From the driver's perspective, you can see like concise, maybe even signs could be projected on the road. But again, it's um, done in a technology way that from the outside you see there are some brighter spots on the road, but you can't really see what. And from the driver's perspective, then you can actually see that. Very interesting. And at some point, we can also do it in the night driving review. Here, visually, one, two, three dots for S-Class. Two dots would be for the E-Class, one dot for the C-Class. So the new design scheme for the headlamp is... You have one stripe here and then it's differentiated between the classes with these LED spots. What do you think about this front design? The new model code is 223 and if it's Z223 it's the Maybach, that's the longest version. If it's V223 that's the one you see here, the long wheelbase version which is the standard version for the US and the length there is 5 meters 29, 17 foot 4 or 208 inches. Whereas the W223 short wheelbase would be 5 meters 18, 17 foot or 204 inches. So both versions actually are a little bit longer than the predecessor. Not a major change, but a little bit longer. Here the door handles are integrated, but here you can see they fold out and in. It depends on that way. It's more streamlined, you know, just as for the air. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Um... You can also open or close it then with the key. It is a fancy feature like this. Yeah, but I mean, classic door handles would also be just fine. <laughs> Wheels come from 18 to 21 inch. 21 inch exclusively for the AMG line. This being the AMG line, but we have the 20 inch wheels. So this is somewhat still a compromise. Air suspension is a standard. A new option, you can also get the E-ABC. That's this E-Active Body Control. So the car can also lean inside the corners. We talked about in the Mercedes GLE or the GLS review. But it's not really a very necessary feature. Yeah, I mean, you can also just live with the normal air suspension. Then, typical design feature for the S-Class is... This here, this C pillar, which always has this very central form falling here, small and getting wider right there. And this has been kept over the recent generations. And also that here, you know, the center of the wheel right here ends 
with the rear door. So these are two typical S-Class design elements which the designers also have kept for this very generation. One very important technology news is you now get rear axle steering and this would actually be a feature I would really go for, I would spend the money for. So far the competition goes like from the rear, you know, from the rear wheels like three degrees or five degrees maximum here, 10 degrees is possible that you turn in the opposite direction than the front wheels. This reduces the turning circle by two meters and makes the car so much more agile. And if you use the autonomous parking function, so it's not possible by, you know, self manually, autonomous driving function, you can also steer at lower speeds in the parallel direction and go like in a kind of crap mode. You know, we've shown that with the Vision AVTR, for example, here already possible. Usually, if you drive faster than 37 miles per hour or faster than 60 kilometers an hour, it then steers in the parallel direction at higher speeds. And at lower speeds always in the opposite direction. And faking, so to speak, a short wheelbase and making this car, this very long car, then more agile than it actually is. And another interesting new safety aspect is when you have a side crash, so someone comes from the side right here and hits the vehicle, it automatically raises about seven centimeters or three inches so the impact is better absorbed by harder body parts in the audi a8 it was that just one side is lifting here in the s class both sides of so the whole car is lifting and then giving you know the inside occupants a better protection there is a discussion however what is now better than for the car facing you and the last time now you know, last time in the studio, we had some discussion that maybe it's worse for the other car hitting you. Now I talked to an expert and he actually told me that it's also better for the car hitting you because when there's like a harder part, then the absorption goes better than when, you know, two soft parts hit, hit each other. So, yeah, really interesting, crash safety wise, if we trust the expert for now, it's also supposed to be better for the car facing you. A very fluent design here at the rear, almost looks like the ending of the raindrop. Tail lamps here very horizontally drawn and have the three-dimensional structure on the inside. However, this one also looks quite like now when you think about an A-class sedan or Mercedes CLA and so on, just definitely bigger. And also this, um, you know, boat or yard style that you have this part here, you know, narrower than the lower part. Also typical S-class design element, so it goes like like this, you know, like this. So very interesting also from this side perspective. Here in the lower part, is that a case for the Alugafu fake exhaust police? You have to decide that because the outer tip, you know, is really large. On the inside, you can see the exhaust. They have a smooth transition there, but hmm, that might still be a case for the Alugafu fake exhaust police. And by the way, another very interesting aspect as for the noise insulation is so when they built this car here just from the raw chassis they already apply some special foam that then extends from the process raw chassis in the paint shop and then f fills up some gaps so you have an even better noise insulation and they really do that from scratch easier release now for the hood when you release it from the inside you can directly open it and today we have here the s580 that's the 4 liter v8 bi turbo will have around 500 horsepower so always with the mild hybrid system now for all petrol engines it will also count for the inline six cylinder petrol engines 3 liter the s500 with 435 horsepower or the s450 with 367 horsepower plus the electric boost each. And then there will be plug-in hybrid versions, both for the inline six cylinder and here also for the V8 engines with a you know, pure electric range about one kilometers or 60 miles. Then this will also be the base, a little bit different engine version than for the S63, the pure AMG model. And above that, there will also be the 12 cylinder for the Maybach. Next to that, you'll also again have the diesel model, three liter, six cylinder, that's too.
this is a new car key. Yeah, feels quite premium like definitely. Doesn't fit to the silver exterior color at the moment, but would of course fit better to the white vehicle. Here the keyless entry function also still works in here with these door handles and you see here they fold in, are aligned then with the vehicle. And there will still be like a very standard S-Class will still feature also other handles. And then you can also press it that it opens again, but There we go. So and this, this is what I mean, you know. It's not that intuitive and, yeah, I don't know. Not too happy with these with these new handles here. I don't know. So then, door closing sound, of course, feels very nice and also nice sound. And then has also the soft close available as an extra. Then, inside of the doors, like here in the quilted structure, high build quality. However, one thing... Let me just deactivate this noise by... Ah, here it is. <laughs> there it is, here, this new switch. This is still a real switch. It's good to have that, but it's at the inside of the doors. And then, what I found a little bit strange here, these, they do, mo do not move again, you know? So, um, you see, I'm doing the controls of the seats at the moment. Something is happening, but you don't see it. So before they were like, you know, giving you feedback, that's gone now. Hmm. Also not a step forward. Then no buttons here also for the controls here for the side mirrors and all these capacitive button controls. It's not intuitive to use at all. Hmm. Murmur's the sound system here, by the way. Now a 4D sound system is available, which can also have some vibrations in this seat. Here. The seating looks very, you know, voluminous. <laughs> I always say it looks in the lower part like molten lava that fall, fell over the seat. Animal skin is standard for this vehicle. This is an option here with these fabric cushions. They are really, really very nice and soft. However, you can also get an all fabric seating for the S-Class. You just have to order it. It is possible also in all markets. Just ask for that if you want to go animal free. How I, however, I think, you know, the pure fabric seats would, of course, be better for the climate comfort, so they stay cooler in summer and warm in winter. But some customers might still want to go for the, um, like this um, sleek leather look. And then they also should offer, you know, a more sustainable alternative. After all, Mercedes claim, the official claim is now sustainable luxury. Not the case for these very seats. However, you sit, of course, very comfortable here and plush and soft. The fabric seat would be even a little bit softer. And then the steering wheel control here, electric up and down, in and out. All new steering wheel here, so it's really, you know, really compact, also for the size of the vehicle. Two steering wheels are available. This is here the AMG steering wheel, the are in the available in AMG line and also in the true AMG model. The other one would have, um, you know, like, one button area here, left and right. This one here is split, looks therefore more sporty and also has a you know, cooler, sportier touch, perverted sides. But these here are all just it's all one button one, two, three, four buttons. Capacitive feedback, some kind of. You also hear something and feel something, but still, to control it here with these um, arrows and so on is harder than before. It looks maybe sleeker, looks cooler overall in the whole interior. They cleaned up about 27 buttons, less than before. They said it as an, you know, like a technology, technology advance. But to me, it is really not. What would be your... <laughs> yeah, that's the voice recognition system. Soon also more to that. Interior overview, it's actually quite good. It's a little cloudy and dark at the moment because here we can see the ambient lighting set to blue. Really nice here upper part, lower part, ambient lighting, that's something Mercedes really can do very, very well. The air vents here in the top part here, in a horizontal way, before that, or if you think about the GLE or GLS, they are bigger and placed right here, here now in this top part then. Then you have 12.3 inch digital instruments on the left, right side this new 12.8 inch screen in a more vertical fit. And this has aroused yeah, so many discussions, soon going in depth on that start stop engine button is right here overall we see a good build quality but here this you know a lot of black piano like i'll use this doesn't give me the best impression 
So hardly any physical buttons left here. This is all also, you know, with these capacitive buttons. There's here also a fingerprint sensor that you can register with a vehicle or with your Mercedes user account. And then you can hop into any rental Mercedes, for example, with the same system here. At some point, just have your fingerprint on there and then all your settings and so on will load. Here again, the view at the steering wheel, which has this, you know, very prominent round structure in the middle part here, even more stressed than before. But really sport look, especially with the AMG styling right here. Volume would be here, up and down, picking up the phone, right side thumb here to control the right side infotainment system. This is possible, but of course you can use the infotainment system via touch as well. This is also meant to be. And on the left side, you can use your left thumb then to control the digital instruments. They also have this new 3D view. You can activate or deactivate it. It's not possible to catch it on camera really. And also when you have it on and close one of your eyes, it's like flat three, uh, two dimensional. When you open your eyes, again, both eyes at the same time, it has like this in-depth feeling. It looks cool, but is it easier to read that way? Not at all. It's harder to read that way. So it's more like a fancy feature. And new head-up display, also soon more details to that. If we go on further into the lower area, then we have this opening right here. And then there's two USB-C chargers, adaptive cup holders. In the very front part, inductive charging for your phone, then some more space for your phone. For example, you want to connect to the cable here, Apple CarPlay and Auto, and here the Apple CarPlay would also be available in the wireless way. And then opening this middle split as we know it before, but not too much space underneath there, but then you have two more USB-C chargers and once again another wireless charger. Then the new infotainment system like here, you can control it by a touch. And it's also easier to reach from here. This is uh, the home button. The climate control is integrated in the screen. That's what I do criticize. It's nice that you have some visualizations as for the ambient lighting, as we know it you know, already. Uh, but hard to do it while driving. They more trust on, for example, using the voice input. Hey, Mercedes. Hey, Mercedes. Hello, I'm Mercedes, your voice assistant. Would you like to know more about what I can do for you? No, just increase the temperature. I'm increasing the temperature to 23 degrees. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the way it could also work while driving, for example. And then impressive camera view, for example. Here you also have a 3D surround camera view. Um, and that, you know, is not that responsive, but it really looks impressive here with a big star. And it's really set out to the cameras that are, you know, all around the vehicle and then you have the visualization right there and you can for example use the semi-autonomous parking functions of that vehicle you can pick the different drive modes here with this dynamic select if you go back here then we go also with the comfort mode sport mode sport plus mode then suspension steering engine input or throttle input and the esp is being changed there's also a volume um, meter right here on the right side but you can also do it like this or at the steering wheel but again physical buttons are almost completely gone then gps view i like this this looks actually quite responsive or responsive enough of course you can also use the voice input and um, set a destination or something and on the top part you can, for example, also share the content then from the front part to the rear, uh, rear um, uh, passengers. You can also do, not sure why it's not loading at the moment, you could um, also um, do a conference call in the vehicle. Comfort settings, you have ambient lighting settings, different colors and so on. Really nice seat massage. For example, here also, um, you know, the, the cushion is actually moving so the lower part of the seat that's really cool for long journeys that something moves in the you know uh, in the lower area that you actually don't have the pressure on one point constantly so i'm then using that on, on, on longer journeys for example if we go back here go here to the vehicle settings you can activate for example some of the assistant systems Active lane change assist, active steering assist. This is in the question, and for example, if you can do that, that the car automatically switches lane, you just hold down the turning indicator and it switches the 
lane automatically. So really a lot to discover here. You don't have any hotkeys, so jumping from one step to another one is sometimes a little bit complicated. Um, and so indeed, I think it was easier before. Yeah. It's the Apple CarPlay integration, like this, all over the screen. This looks actually quite fancy. Why not? And then this new sound system. Let's test it right here. And yeah, that is as expected. Mind blowing. Wow. That's awesome. You can also slide again with the volume. <laughs> God. This is a really very impressive sound system. And you can even hear, set here, different surround, easy listening, 3D sound, however you want to have it. So this changes the characteristic of the music and then the 4D sound. Here you can also change this bass vibration intensity. So when I set auto 10, now my whole seat is vibrating alongside with the music and you can also use that as a seat massage, for example, because it also maybe you know releases some tension in the muscles when it's all the way set to 10. Digital instruments, these are the infrared lights. You can see them on camera, but not with the human eye. These are for the eye tracking for the 3D display. And here when it's on or off, from the driver's perspective, then you get like a depth to the map. But actually when you're in a 2D mode, it's just better to look at it. It just doesn't look that fancy and you cannot see that on camera. Then you can also switch your views like this or switch them completely like um, you know, here a navigation all over the place like this for example or you can also go to a exclusive, so called exclusive look like this or maybe the sporty gauges so everything of that is possible and here you can also then set the augmented reality functions for example this is how the arrows will look like these are all the head-up display options you have. Now the new head-up display, it's really far away, so you can very well see it in your line of sight, speed and so on, and loud speed, and when you then have also a GPS destination set, you will have these augmented reality functions here with the arrows, you can see it very well right there, so uh, next turn will be right there, and also like individual small arrows, so one of these blue dots will be projected like where exactly is the next intersection where you need to go. You can also follow it on the camera while driving and so on. So this is a very, very helpful new feature, this augmented reality help display. Now to the rear area, of course, very important for the S-Class, this being the long wheelbase model or as I said, the long wheelbase model is the standard model for US. You cannot get short wheelbase in US and in Germany. Short wheelbase is more popular. Rear seat entertainment is also possible. It mirrors the stuff that is happening in the front, basically. But the question is if nowadays you rather just use your own smartphone or your own iPad and so on and so on. Inside of the doors look similar, just like in the front. And you also have these, um, you know, the levers here for the windows, all four. And you can also put these shades up here, like this. Or down again, like this, all electric. And then the normal seating position here from this side this would be behind the driver just you can see the leg room and that's yeah don't even have to discuss the leg room here in the long reverse model and again yeah of course it's this typical luxury sedan seating position rather lend backwards a little bit so sometimes people start to go for the SUVs to have a more upright seating position in the rear and then you have the electric controls here at the side once again they do not give you a uh, feedback but still something happens when you push it like this, then the seat here is going forward and forward and forward. You can see here, so you can make this seating area a little bit longer and you are even more like in this relaxed sleeping position. And the cool thing to me is really here, this, um, this microfiber cushion, this is so comfortable. Wow, this is really awesome. And in an extended heating pack, you can also get these here with the heating function and that's, of course, even cooler. And, you know, when you just imagine that your head gets a little bit warmer than here. There are different options here for the rear area. You can get a bench that goes all the way through. You can get this individual seating here, which is split. 
And then you can get it in two versions. One is basically on demand. You know, you can put this stuff down then. And here, this is like the, you know, the most you know, extensive single seating option. So you have stuff like this here, where you have a you know, separate climate unit right there, cup holders. And then you have this area here, which is then fixed. So in another version, you could fold this one here up again. This one here, then again with the with another tablet, you can also just pull it out, like this here. Have to wait a little bit. There it comes out. And then you can use this one here, and again also control, for example, the your seat and so on, and seat heating and so on and so on. So now I made myself a little bit more comfortable here. By the way, panoramic roof. This is split. You also have one for the rear, and this also belongs to this three-dimensional, or in this case, maybe also 40 Burmester sound system. Here, this middle part here, you can fold up for some cubby hole. Again, the other version would be that you fold this entire uh, thing up, and then can still um, sit here as a third adult. Also, a lot of one, two, three, four USB-C chargers and two HDMI, but also inductive charging possible. And then you have some cubby holes right here. In the top part and also in the lower part. Yeah, in the Maybach would be rather than for champagne. And here in the rear seating, again, I mean, the, the normal position here is already pretty cool. And then you also see one button here again at the inside of the doors. You also have this extended function here for this, you know, lying seating position rather. And the thing is here, what they've done is install an additional airbag because when you are more in a sleeping position here in a vehicle, then the danger is when you like like this and there's a crash, you basically slide down underneath the seat belt. And so this additional airbag is pushing you up a little bit that you're more pushed into the seat belt once again. This is not a new feature for this generation, just to mention it again because it's a very interesting one and i think yeah i'll put off my shoes already that i don't make anything dirty right here in the vehicle of course you want to be you know as clean as possible and i have a nice soft cushion here as well now for my feet and with one with 86 or six with one it's really close it fits when i have my shoes off but then i you know already hit the seat of course so I would say like for one meters, like 80 and six foot, that's ideal. I'm already maybe a little bit too tall for this function. But still, I mean, talking on a high level or high niveau. And maybe when we go home today, when our shooting is finished, I should maybe just take this seat here, shouldn't I? The trunk area is 550 liters or 14 cubic feet. And here we go. On the left side here, a lot of sound equipment, so not the most square dimension considering the size of the vehicle, but it's still high enough. You see here a backpack fits in easily. Underneath, you have some more storage right there. Interesting cable collection there. And then you can see here there's also the ski hatch that you can load things through. So that would also be possible. The height here of the trunk is 55 centimeters a little bit more that's actually okay then here the width this is the actual problem so this is a meter and see here it's it's actually shorter or narrower here this is about just 80 centimeters and the normal length of the trunk then here about one meters and 17. an interesting small detail you now have these additional lights here when the trunk is open just as an additional safety indicator left and right Welcome guys to the S-Class driving review in this new generation. Impressive camera image right here, then augmented reality on the camera screen. And I see the same also in the head-up display. Thanks Jonas. <laughs> so this is also this new augmented reality head-up display. It's really hard to pick it on camera while driving, but it, you know, the image you, you see here um, on that screen, that's actually that what I what I also see in the head-up display and that's of course really really impressive it is more far away than anything else we have seen so far and I, and I have wow this is really cool so 
like this blue arrow was basically moving then towards the traffic light and you could really follow it here in that display that is really really interesting just deactivate the turning indicator for a second and this is also one of the major things first here about the new xs class of course it was well insulated before but i told you in the exterior part so they have this new mechanism that you know while doing the chassis they, they already apply some foam that then extends during the next process and fills up the gaps that so there's you know nothing which could create like a you know disturbing sound and being here like it's a little bit rainy outside trucks passing us there are you know planes path, uh, passing over us we hear absolutely nothing it's so super silent in here and even standing still <laughs> is then some kind of a joy wow i really feel the rear axle steering as well so the rear axle steering talked about it earlier as well with this maximum of 10 degrees in the opposite direction this um, really fakes a shorter wheelbase so the car feels as it, was, as, as it would be a little bit shorter and this really helps steering around this especially at the long wheelbase version which is then the standard version for the US and I can really say this augmented reality help display is already one of my favorite features because so far I mean the augmented reality function here on the screen has always been nice and you can see it right here once again but here having it on the uh, on the head-up display you can so much more just concentrate on the road and you don't have to check the map or something here once again I don't have to look down in the instruments in the map I don't have to look down here to the map I can just rely on the arrows and they really show me Whereas the next intersection, especially here, like, you know, we're going like this, like a circle and so many directions we could possibly go. That's really, really well done. Driving the 580, the V8. We already drove that one too in the GLS. We say it's GLS, so we know the basic engine. Um, here, final specs as we talk are not ready yet for the S-Class. So around four, 500 horsepower, around 500 horsepower here for the S-Class and so a little bit more than in the GLS also with the MHF system right here but although it's mild hybrid system of course it won't be the one that is you know most economic driving it now on the motorway and the air suspension is doing a phenomenal job it is giving you this carpet feeling so a very soft ride we know and expect that from the S-Class blind spot monitor is active here at the side mirrors when I hit the turning indicator we also get an acoustic warning and the flashing as well and we can set the cruise control here on the steering wheel with these capacitive buttons here now it's a little bit harder the feedback you get so before when you had the real physical buttons that was definitely easier to experience you know and here the distance to the car in front of us is also being kept at any time I can also just accelerate myself I want it to be a little bit faster like this here and the V8 is giving you a little subtle growling sound and of course really good in the performance and very very quick change steering wheel seat position until six dots are visible on the upper edges I'm not sure what the car is wanting now but you know that's also something um, so there appears a message and I'm not really sure what the car wants from me um, yeah but I think that's also this uh, scheme of, uh, yeah, at which point something is over-engineered because you're driving a car and then even as an experienced car reviewer, sometimes you don't really know what the car is, you know, wants actually. It's something with the um, head-up display because there's a green dot moving now and, but, you know, these things can, can really happen in, in such a vehicle that you get some, you know, irritations. Then the lane keeping assist is really subtle. so. We are being in the center of the lane here all the time and even if I would take my hands off the steering wheel, which at the moment is not allowed in this vehicle, level 3 autonomous driving that you can actually temporarily put off, uh, off the hands of the steering wheel is uh, or will be allowed Germany first, mid-2021 and level 3 is then really a situation where the car is completely responsible in a certain limit, you know, in some situations and you can already buy an S-Class that is able to do that this version here not but you can actually already get one of that pretty impressive too so once again 
it's just such a flawless ride. The soft air suspension, the great noise insulation, probably the best noise insulation there is on the market overall. And then again, some of these nice technology features, again, the head-up display is really, really helpful. So you actually don't even have to read the map anymore to really see what you're doing. This may be also <laughs> helpful then for the passenger or so. And I, I, I really have the feeling that I have to be more silent intentionally so I'm not too loud while speaking you know, in, the, in, this, um, in this driving moderation. So <laughs> that's how silent the car is. Yet again, we are you know, a very powerful engine under the hood, but most of the time when you have high displacement, you sometimes also just think, mm, yeah, whatever, we can drive it at low RPM. This also gives you more like a um, you know, sovereign feeling on the road. If you want a little bit sportier, it's two lane change drive here. So even though when I'm driving a little bit sportier, back you feel that the suspension is really soft and that's really good however it's not that it would be leaning too much or so here now we're driving a little bit faster and this is wow i mean it's a soft air suspension it's a heavy car but still the car feels really precise the steering has a good natural feeling very very stable and that was actually quite fast here for that corner so now we accelerate out on the motorway Unfortunately, you cannot see the speed. We tried everything actually, and it's just in the top part here, but it's blocked by the steering wheel. And let me just drop back to 80 kilometers an hour and accelerate to 100. Let's see, and let's go. Look, that's it. There, yeah, I was already at 110, so I have to reduce the speed again. Nice sound from this V8 engine, and we already experienced that in the GLS that it gives you really serious performance. Um, fuel economy won't be the best. I told you that earlier. I think you guess you just have to live with that. Or this engine will also be available as a plug-in hybrid, 580e. That could both be a possibility. Or then go with the inline six-cylinder petrol, or even then the diesel engine, depending on the mileage you're doing. But once again, I mean, also here we know with the soft fabric cushions here. It's such a car to relax in and if we then also would have the fabric surface for the seats that would be even better because here the animal skin gets quite stiff then from the surfacing so if you get a s-class with fabric seating it's nothing where I would say like oh there's less lu less luxury no in no way so you know that the queen would never drive on leather seats because it was just used for the driver for you know more you know better cleaning and durability purposes and so on so the pure luxury that was initially perceived was always a fabric surface or maybe silk or something but but never like the slick animal skin surface when being here in traffic it's one of the cars where you care least about traffic because you say once again it's so silent and so relaxed it's just fine when you compare it to the previous generation S-Class, of course here in the new generation, some tweaks here and there, I feel the noise insulation is definitely even better than before, even though it was at a very high level before already. Um, the steering feeling is to me also um, a little bit better. The steering wheel itself is also for the driving input really cool because it feels you know, relaxed, calm and collected precise, natural, but you can also steer it in a fun, sporty way, no doubt about that. The rear axis steering, big difference when we're driving more than 60 kilometers an hour, or like, that's like uh, 45 miles or something. Um, then it switches to the parallel steering, front and rear, so it gives us more stability. So when we go from left to right now, the rear axis steers in this direction as well, gives me more stability just below that speed then we have you know the more agility and also the reduced turning circle reduce the turning circle by two meters that's really impressive so that rear axis steering biggest difference then to the previous generation and of course then the the new head-up display um, new mbox generation here of course for the s-class that's the thing so um, 
when we drove to this event, we were driving in the GLS, which has the current generation of the MBOX. And I mean, now when you see it running here, it's not the biggest difference. But I feel when we had the two monitors right, left and right here, you could better see what's going on than with this central screen on here. This more makes the impression of that it's like optimized for autonomous driving, optimized for the passenger and not necessarily for the driver. However, the touch can be better reached here. You know, when it's like here, you do touch it like here. So this can be better reached with touch. And one reason for that is, of course, that they want to in introduce here the um, climate control as touch. You always look down to that, that you really hit it. So to me, that's, that's distracting. The manual climate unit that was there before was definitely better. So my, my verdict here, previous S-Class, this S-Class is driving-wise, even better, precise, silent, great as for the rear axle steering, nice with the augmented um, reality head-up display, but the rest of the user input more complicated than before and in some points also a little bit over-engineered that you sometimes think, so um, yeah, was that really necessary now? So. Um, technological process is always helpful when it's really making things better and easier and not necessarily like look at that well that's a cool feature and one of that is also the 3d view of the digital instruments um first of all i'm not needing the digital instrument that much anymore because i have the, you know the new head-up display and then when you have the 3d view here you sometimes think like this is a cool feature you could show off to your friends but it makes um, it makes it harder to read the map, you know. Or for example here, I, I went back to now this mode, why am I now in this uh, different view mode? So sometimes things happen where you ask yourself, did I really do that now or was it unintentional from the vehicle? Yeah, so that, that's the thing to me, like the disadvantage here of the S-Class. Um, so driving modes, we have here Comfort, Eco, Sport, Sport Plus. So this will tune up the engine. Also start-stop is being deactivated. And in Sports Plus, when I do acceleration now, you see it's drawn back. Really nice acceleration and I'm gone and the gears are turned up higher. So there you can really play the sporty side. However, the air suspension is still very soft, but just a little bit stiffer and you get some, some more feedback just, you know, so. There can be very, and here when I'm really driving below 60, this was again really helpful from the augmented reality display. So even though you're just steering around the city, not necessarily parking in and out, you feel the rear axle steering so much, um, especially when you, um, you know, when you're like here and then turn a little bit faster, you're like like this, something like this then you immediately feel how the rear, almost like with a rear-wheel drive car, kicks out a little bit, you know what I mean? So, not only does it fake a shorter wheelbase, it makes the car, you know, more sports car-alike. Of course, the S-Class is a rear-wheel driven platform anyway, so you either have rear-wheel drive models or all-wheel drive. In this case in here, these, these very, very powerful ones, always all-wheel drive, but this well, rear axle steering even makes that better. By the way, here, our shooting location here for the day is this customer center in Sindelfingen, where you can, for example, also uh, pick up your new bands. And yeah, you might guess it, we have special permission also to film right here. Although <laughs> all sign says, no, you can't. <laughs> yeah, but for you, of course, we make that possible. We let this G-Class pass. Maybe some drifting, you know? in front of the center, hmm, not today. <laughs> so I really hope you, you enjoyed this driving part here. Very interesting impressions here with the all new S-Class. And last but not least, we have the fuel economy. Let's see on our short trip here. And that is 11 liters on 100 kilometers. So with the GLS, I had about 13. So that's really way better. Let me just translate it to the um, to the MPG figures. That's 21 MPG US or 25 MPG UK. And that's indeed 
two to three liters better than with the GLS with the same engine. And yeah, you know, like two to three MPG also more. So as for the fuel economy, considering this was the eight cylinder, thumbs up. And about autonomous parking in and out, you might know it from the E-Class that you can use your smartphone to park the car in and out, you know, in certain parking lots or so where it gets really narrow. But here, there's a step further, a so-called intelligent park pilot, newly available for the new S-Class. You can order it together with the big parking package. It's an extra option you can order. And then the S-Class is actually able to park itself without using the, the smartphone while doing that so you just go and the car does everything by itself so you still need the smartphone app and we have parked the s-class right here in the dropping zone in an airport parking lot and the special thing is that this parking lot has an infrastructure so above us here we have some cameras here for example there's one of the cameras and then there's also a wi-fi connection right here this is then connected to the vehicle. So you need the infrastructure in the parking lot that it can communicate with the car. So we have dropped it here. And this is just a drop zone where everyone comes in. And now the rest of the parking lot is basically empty. And then it needs to be put in a certain parking spot. So in here I can now request the authorization for the drop-off. Then it takes just a few seconds. The car already responds. I already heard something from, from the car. And then... You might, you know, get yourself ready to go to the airport and don't need to worry about where the car will actually end up. Now the car is starting. So, vehicle ready for drop off and now I have to confirm again, start drop off now. And now, magic, the S-Class is starting. And I'm not controlling the smartphone, so I'm not doing anything. Everything is just done by itself. So we now arrived in the lower level and supposed to be in the spot 53, so also goes back in the rear. Uh, theoretically it would be possible to pick the car up here then again, but it's rather intended when you, for example, touch down again, then you call the car with your smartphone and then you receive it once again in the drop zone so you don't have to search for it. However, the smartphone app will also give you the information where exactly the car is parking. And you see, there's no one inside the vehicle. <laughs> Just as proof, you probably see it also on camera. The car is doing that by itself. And sometimes it's really close in, you know, in, in the different ramps going up and down and so on. So, and this can be really helpful because you could theoretically also put the you know, the, the single parking spots really narrow to each other and have just more space available in the whole parking lot. And of course, make it easier that you don't have to walk through your car and always get on and off in the drop zone. And now to our conclusion for today with the all new Mercedes S-Class. Exteriorized, definitely more an evolution so not the biggest change but of course here and there today also with the amg line overall a very sleek and elegant design and so far the feedback was very good interior definitely more a revolutionary change especially as for the infotainment with this vertical orientation and of course everything more digitalized the voice input is actually very good it's the second best one on the market you know, just right after the Android Automotive system that is first used in the Polestar 2. Then the build quality is actually quite nice, but then a lot of use of black piano lacquer. That's maybe something that's lacking <laughs> in, in, in quality or just, you know, they're like prone to scratches and so on and so on. As for the part of over-engineering, you know, there are a lot of new, very cool technology features. However, the user input in the interior is worse than before. So when you reduce buttons, it maybe looks cool, but it's not better for the customer to use it. So I had more problems using this system here than with the previous generation, especially on the steering with the, with the capacitive buttons. The real ones before were easier to use and also on the center infotainment or having like a real climate unit is still better and so far all the feedback we have had here in our YouTube comments were always like this so why are manufacturers doing that 
at some points also cost savings because every single small element is more cost intensive than just putting everything into one screen. It's also one of the reasons why Tesla started to put everything just in the screen and that's it. And then you can also update it later on. The advantage is, yeah, I just told you, you can also some, you know, you can update other features later on a little bit easier. Very comfortable, of course, on the interior, as we expect from the S-Class. The sound system is really superb. What a pleasant experience. Nice that it's also offered with the all-fabric interior. However, it's not advertised that much, even though it would even give you more comfort. At least we tell you. They should, however, still also offer some animal skin alternatives as a high-grade leatherette. We've seen it in concept cars, my say, is offering, and we've seen it also across the model range where this article or mbtex as the brands are called are meanwhile at the very very high um, high level and here for example they could also say we offer an even higher level bmw shows it with the new 5 series with the center tech seats right there this being the long wheelbase model you also have a lot of space on the rear the trunk capacity is a little bit disappointing for a car of that size but then again, also not the main use of this car. As for driving, even more silent than before, I think I can easily claim the most silent car on the market as for the interior noise insulation. Also with this new cool process that they start with the insulation foam really at the raw chassis, very impressive. Good safety technologies, well working assistance systems and so on. And the most impressive technology higher driving wise, the new rear axle steering, which really makes the car so easy to maneuver, although it has a long wheelbase and also very agile still, although we have this, you know, carpet air uh, ride. So very comfortable, of course, in the riding. Also one of the most comfortable cars as for the suspension on the market. So once again, it is probably one of the most impressive cars at all, even more so here in this new generation with the little bit lacking of the more complicated user interface. That's my verdict for today, but a very interesting ride for sure. Tell me your opinion about the all-new Mercedes S-Class. See you in the comments and also tune in next time.